So in this video, let's talk about the latest released in Next.js, which is 14.2, what has been updated or what has changed, and what is worthy of paying attention or makes our job easier as developers. There has been improvements in Turbo Pack. If you're not familiar with Turbo Pack, it's a Rust-based alternative to Webpack. So it's a build tool or a compiler. Um, you can use it in development. It's not yet ready for um, building your applications or, or for your production. You can pass this dash, dash dash turbo to use it. We're going to dive a bit deeper um, in a second, uh, but in development, it's almost ready to be used. 99.8% of tests are passing, so you can use it today if you want to. There's improvements in build and production. This is memory usage, CSS optimization, and tree shaking, caching improvements. There is this new experimental value that you can pass to configure how the cache on the client side, which is the router cache, uh, can be invalidated. So there's four layers of caching in Next.js. I have a video coming up on the channel where we talk about caching in Next.js. Uh, but there's this client-side router cache, which prevents the browser to send in requests for visited routes or prefetched routes. And by default, they have some invalidation times. And now you can change that invalidation time on the client-side router, router cache um, to customize how and when they're going to be invalidated. And lastly, the one that I'm very excited about or the major pain point for anyone who has created uh, Next.js apps in the app router is uh, when you're dealing with this hydration mismatch errors and literally this, uh, the error uh, DX or um, the pop-up, the model that you get and the stack, it just literally useless, doesn't tell you anything. So there's improvements there, which we're going to see in action. So let's dive right in and see this in more details. So let's just start from the Turbo Pack. By the way, if you wanted to update your Next.js, you can run uh, this at latest flag with whatever package manager that you're using, uh, either if it is PMPM or NPM or Yarn to update your package. This is for installing a new application with the latest features. Now, as I mentioned, Turbo Pack is a Rust-based compiler, an, alter an alternative to Webpack. And it's now ready or almost ready to use in development. It's uh, still not ready for uh, production. There's things to be improved there if you wanted to uh, use it in production. But if you wanted to use as a local dev, it's pretty fast. You can just pass in the dash dash turbo to check it out today. Um, probably would have a video on the channel coming up uh, on why you would want to use this or what's the benefit of using it or how things are different soon on the channel. So stay tuned if you're interested for that. Now, the second improvement is build and production improvement. We talked about it briefly. It's tree shaking uh, on the client side. So, for example, it's uh, better optimizing your bundle um, for production or the JS, the JavaScript that you ship to um, the client. For example, if you're importing a single icon component from a file that has the used client, it no longer includes all the other icons that that package has, which r largely reduces the production JavaScript bundle size that you ship to your users. So that's an improvement. Uh, build memory usage. If you are dealing with uh, humongous Next.js applications, you might have come across this error when you were building your application where it would just error out or it would have an out of memory crash. Now they have changed the way that um, the bundling logic and optimization works, specifically the minification and over bundling to reduce the amount of memory needed when you're building your application. So the tests are showing a reduced uh, memory usage. But there's also this experimental flag that you can pass into your next config that shows you the memory usage. If you're running into any problems, now you can just monitor to see what's happening there. Now for CSS, there is also some optimizations there by chunking the CSS to avoid conflicting styles when you navigate between different pages. I haven't run this I haven't run to this issue personally because I am not using uh, CSS modules or global CSS. I use Tailwind um, almost all the time. But if you're using CSS in global styles or CSS modules, there's some recommendations here. So use CSS modules over global styles. Only import CSS modules in a single JSTS file. So it can create a trace track. And if you are using global class names, you can you should import the global styles in the same JSTS as well. So if you're using CSS modules and global CSS in combination, this is how to avoid the conflict. 
Again, um, if you have had problems in this area, maybe you would want to dive into the documentation and read more about it. This is, I, I haven't had personally any problems in uh, these type of conflicts in CSS, so I can't speak from my experience. Caching improvements. This is where we talked about the router cache, which is a client-side cache in Next.js. So there is different layers of caching from server to the client and the HTTP cache in Next.js helping to build faster applications. And specifically, there is one that is called the router cache, which is a client-side cache inside the browser, which uh, its primary job is to prevent the browser to send requests for prefetched pre or visitor routes. So if you uh, let's say you have different routes in your application, home, about, and contact, and you visit the contact page. So there's a, a request going to the server um, and fetching that necessary um, data, whether it's static or dynamic, doesn't matter. And server component, it receives it. And now, because you've already visited that page, if you just revisited that page, instead of resending that request to the server, it just uses the cache inside the browser. Now, by default, uh, these caches on the browser are going to be cached for 30 seconds if you're using a link component without the prefetch prop. So by default, if you just use the regular link component, visit a route or uh, hover over the link which prefetches that link, it's going to stay in the browser cache for 30 seconds. If you set the prefetch prop specifically, it will be cached for five minutes. So it increases the cache time by five minutes. But these two were constant you couldn't change them before but now you can pass in this experimental stale times option to your next config to configure this two times for your dynamic or for your links or for uh, when you are passing in a prefetch prop to your link components and change the amount of time that you want this cache to be stale or the invalidation uh, time period now if you've used parallel routes or intercepting routes in the past uh, you know that they're not quite there yet. There is some problems with the client-side cache or the router cache, again, in the parallel routes. I have two videos on the channel that I've been told they're very good. So I will link it in the description. If you don't know these two concepts, watch the two videos. You would get a very good grasp of the concept and how to use them. Um, primarily, there was a problem when you were running these two in the local development, and it works properly in the production, but in local development, there was this caching problem with the router cache, uh, and that has seemed to be solved. Um, again, if you're revalidating the path and tag inside of a parallel route or intercepting route, if you're invoking a server action, it, it is going to revalidate cache and refresh the visible slots while maintaining the view. This is something that we have had encountered in the past, and also using the router that refresh also works the same way by maintaining the current view. Um, so I will have to check this out and see if that specific problem that we were facing in the video I mentioned what the problem is, uh, has been resolved or not, but I think there's still more to be done in parallel routes and intercepting routes. It's a very cool concept um, for either showing uh, two routes simultaneously side by side that's the parallel route so you can have two different pages but show them in, in the same layout so you can have more slots on top of the children's slot inside of a layout and then show them side by side and in the intercepting route from a high level you're just basically intercepting a request that is supposed to go to for example a specific id page or product and then show the content of that page in the current context instead of just sending them to that page so it's a very cool concept and i hope this uh they continue iterate over them until they're perfect uh, without any errors now the last thing i want to mention is the error dx improvement so if you have had this hydration mismatch error in the past you probably have had pulled your hair because uh, the error stack that was shown to you wasn't actually very useful because it doesn't tell you where this error is happening it just tells you there's this div in the p and main what page what component we don't know and this has been improved in version 14.2. Now you can expect to see, oh, th there's a div in the P, which is not supposed to be there. Semantically, this is in HTML wrong. And then it's coming from this specific component. So now it's easier to trace this back because this is one of the most common uh, errors that you're going to get inside the app router when there's this mismatch of props, attributes, or the HTML that's sent from the server and what is rendered on the client side. And this is hopefully going to help you trace it back and see where this is actually happening. 
And lastly, the new releases in React 19, which is going to be released later this year, is going to be also available in Next.js. Now we've been using features from React 19, and I do have a specific video for these new features in React 19. I'm going to link it in the description. Uh, and we've been mostly using all of them in Next.js, uh, but from the Canary channel in React, which is an experimental channel that's not even available to um, React users outside of Next.js. But hopefully down the line, when React 19 is actually released, you can have all of these features outside of Next.js. So if you're creating a standalone React application, you can also have this new feature, such as the actions and the related hooks. Uh, but there's also more stuff probably coming in in React 19 that is going to be also um, implemented in Next.js. So down the line this year, we're going to have another major release for Next.js, which is probably going to be Next.js 15 which incorporates all of this React 19 changes down the line. I'm not expecting that much of a change in the way that we are using Next.js because we already have these features from the Canary channel in Next.js, but we'll see what happens or what comes in the new version release of Next.js and all the new changes. And that's a wrap for the latest release on Next.js 14.2, all the improvements and features. If you have any questions, like always, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.